Ministries is a harbor ministries with a manor park series, short and systematic Bible teaching that I believe will be able to transform your life. My name is Adam Nisingu, going to you our very first series entitled Fruitful Kevin. Now I am convinced that the people out there who suppose that godliness is a means to gain. And because of that, they are fleeing the flock of God instead of feeding the flock of God. Now I want to say this, that anyone who tells you to give so that you can receive a blessing is a false prophet. You can never buy the blessings of God because they're freely given to us by Jesus Christ. So why fruitful giving? I'm not seeking to, to get a financial gift, but I'm, I rather am seeking to bear fruit into your account. Fruitful giving is a kind of giving that is going to bring forth the character of, of a godly life in you and a godly impact and change to the people that you give to in this age and in the age to come. So as you can see, I'm trying to seek fruit that will be credited into your heavenly account and not your bank account. Now if you turn to me in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verses 1 to 7, you will see the Macedonians as our case study from where we can learn from the importance of fruitful giving. There are four lessons that we can learn from them and today I want to focus on the very first lesson that says fruitful giving is unconditional. Verse 1 and 2 says, Moreover, brethren, we make known to you the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded in the riches of their liberality. They gave in three conditions. The first one, they gave in the great trial of, of affliction. When people suppose that they were unable to give, uh, they should focus on themselves or uh, and that they needed aid from other people. The Macedonians were selflessly in love and they gave towards the poor saints at Jerusalem. Secondly, the Macedonians gave in their extreme poverty. Somebody once said, you don't have to be rich to be generous. If he has a spirit of generosity, a pauper can give like a prince. Like you can see, even the poor people can give like a prince. James 2.5 says, listen, my beloved brethren, has God not chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which He promised to those who love Him? Life is not dependent upon how much possessions we have, but upon our rich relationship with Jesus Christ. Thirdly, the Macedonians gave in the abundance of their joy. The, band, the joy of knowing who we are in Christ and what Christ has done for us should propel us to give as a well of gratitude unto Him. We don't give to receive, but rather we give to say thank you, Jesus, for the gift of eternal life that you have given me. In conclusion, the first was out of command, the second was out of trust, the third was out of, gra of gratitude. Command, trust, and gratitude can overpower us to be any circumstance and for us to be able to give. In any circumstance that you may find yourself in, are you in affliction, are you in poverty, or are you joy 